Hi kids, our topic for today is science laboratory tools. We're going to categorize it into eight according to their uses. First one is use for heating and then use for measuring and holding liquids then use for holding solids use in measuring solids use for transferring use for holding both powder and liquid chemicals use for mixing and other laboratory tools so let's start with use for heating the first one is wire gauze a wire gauze is spreads the heat of the burner and prevents the breaking of the object being heated. Here's a picture of a wire gauze. Next one is a tripod. It is a three-legged platform used to support a tool in a flask or a beaker. This is where a wire gauze will be placed. Next one is alcohol lamp. It is used for heating materials. Here's a picture of how you will put the wire gauze and the alcohol lamp in the tripod. Here's the picture of a alcohol lamp. And here's another picture that is lit. Another is a Bunsen burner. It is a small adjustable gas burner. Here's a picture of a Bunsen burner and another one that is lit. The next one is iron stand with ring. It is used to hold or clamp laboratory glassware and other equipment in place while heating. Here's a picture of an iron stand with ring and also a clamp. This is how you will assemble the, the Bunsen burner, the the iron stand, the gauze, and the beaker. So again, the laboratory tools that is used for heating are wire gauze, tripod, iron stand with ring and clamp, and alcohol lamp. Next one is Use for measuring and holding liquids. First one is the beaker. It is used to measure the amount of liquid and also used for heating. There are different sizes of beakers. Next one is the Erlenmeyer flask. holding and measuring chemical liquid samples and can be used to mix heat and boil chemicals. That's a picture of an Erlenmeyer flask. There are also different sizes. Next one is a graduated cylinder. It is used to measure the volume of a liquid that's a picture of a graduated cylinder. There are different sizes of graduated cylinder. The next one is a test tube. It holds a small amount of liquid and is its use in observation.
Here's a picture of a test tubes. These test tubes have covers. The next one is glass jar or bottles. It is used to store regions or samples. Here are the pictures of jars and bottles. Again, a use for measuring and holding liquids. Beakers, Erlenmeyer flask, graduated cylinder, jars, and test tubes. The next category is used for holding solids. Forceps. It is used to grasp small objects or when many objects need to be held at one time while the hands are used to perform a task. This is a picture of forceps and another one. The next one is tongs. These are large pincers for grasping and lifting vessels of heat resistant material. The next one is a test tube holder. It is used to hold test tubes during heating. Here's a picture of a test tube holder and another picture a test tube holder holding a test tube. Again, these are the laboratory tools used for holding solids. A forceps, tongs, and a test tube holder. Next one is use in measuring solids. The first one is platform balance. It is used for weighing objects. Here's a picture of a platform balance. The next one is a triple beam balance. It is used to measure mass very precisely. The middle beam, which is the largest size, the far beam, which is the medium size, and the front beam, which is the smallest size. Here's a picture of the triple beam balance. The last one is a spring balance. It is used to measure the weight of an object by opposing the force of gravity acting with the force of an extended spring. Here's a picture of a different size of a spring balance. Again, these are the laboratory tools used in measuring solids. The platform balance, the triple beam balance, and the spring balance. The next category is used for transferring. The first one is a dropper. It is used to transfer small quantities of liquids. Here's a picture of a dropper. The next one is a pipette. It is used to transport a measured volume of liquid. Here's a picture of a pipette and another one. Next is a funnel. A funnel transfers liquids from one container to another. Here's a picture of a funnel. The next one is a spatula. It is used to transfer powdered chemicals to avoid contamination. 
Here's a picture of a spatula. These are the laboratory tools used for transferring. The droppers, the pipette, the funnel, and the spatula. The first three laboratory tools are used in liquids and only the spatula used for the powdered chemicals. The next category is used for holding both powder and liquid chemicals. The first one is a watch glass. A watch glass holds small amount of liquids or powder under observation. Here's a picture of a watch glass. Next one is a crucible and cover. It is used to hold chemicals and powder to be heated. Here's a picture of a crucible and cover. The next one is evaporating dish. It is used to evaporate excess solvents. Here's a picture of evaporating dish. So again, these are the laboratory tools used for holding both powder and liquid chemicals. Evaporating dish, crucible and cover, and watch glass. Another category is used for mixing. The first one is steering rod. It is used to steer or mix mixtures and compounds. Here's a picture of a steering rod. Another is a mortar and pestle. It is used to mix and used to grind and crush. Here's a picture of a mortar and pestle. Again, the laboratory tools used for mixings are mortar and pestle and steering rod. The next category is other laboratory tools. First one is the test tube rock. It holds test tubes to avoid breaking. Also, it is used for observation purposes. Here's a picture of a test tube rock. The next one is a thermometer. It measures the coolness and hotness of an object. Here's a picture of a thermometer. The last one is a microscope. A microscope is an optical instrument that enlarges images of minute objects that cannot be seen by the unaided eye. Here's a picture of a microscope. Again, these are the other laboratory tools the test tube rock, the thermometer, and the microscope. I hope you learned something today, kids. See you on the next video.